Hi guys, chapter seven is gonna be solving systems of equations by various means, okay? So 7.1, you're gonna solve a system of equations by graphing. A system of equation is just more than one equation. Okay, so instead of just drawing one line, you're gonna have drawing two lines or maybe even three lines. Um, that's a system, okay? A system is just more than one. There's gonna be three different ways of solving, graphing, substitution, and then elimination, which is also called linear combination. So the first one is going to be graphing. When you graph a system, you just graph the two lines, and wherever they intersect, that is your solution. Okay, the solution has to be true for both equations, and the only place on the, on the lines that's going to be true for both is where they intersect, and they can only intersect at one place. Okay, so when we solve by graphing, we just draw our lines. So the green one um, is y is equal to 2x minus 3. I start at negative 3 and I go up 2 and over 1 and down 2 and over 1. This is why you need to be good at graphing because you're going to be just graphing quite a bit. Okay. In the red one, y is equal to x minus 1. I start at minus 1, I go up 1 over 1 and down 1 and over 1. And you can see that I haven't intersected yet. So I need to keep extending both lines until they intersect. And I can see that if I go here, now they will intersect. So when I draw this red line, that works. And then when I draw this green line, if I go up 2 over 1, this is going to be my intersecting point. Okay. So on your graph, I do want you to circle the answer just like this. And then I want you to write the coordinates. So it's 2 comma 1. Okay, so my solution is 2 comma 1. That's all you have to do. Okay, you can leave it right on the graph, circle it, put your answer there. Now, another part of the homework will say, is 2 comma 1 a solution of this systems of equations? Okay, they give you the point and they'll say, is this a system? You need to plug the x and the y in to both equations and it, and it needs to be true for both equations in order to be a solution. If it's only true for one of them, it is not um, a solution. Okay, so when we put it in here, if I put a 2 here and a 1 here, so 2 for x and a 1 for y, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3 is 1, that is true. Okay, so that works. If I put a 2 in here for this equation and a 1 here, 2 minus 1 is 1, so it is true. So this is a solution. Okay. So I just showed you two different styles of doing it. First one is solving by graphing. The other one, and they don't give an example in the book, that's why I wanted to show you one here, is actually, in a way, checking your solution. And you do not need to check your solutions on your homework this way. You don't have to stick them back in. You can do a visual check to see that they are true for both of them. Okay. The only reason I did this one um, algebraically is because that's one a different way of um, they're going to ask a different type of question they're going to ask. Okay, so here is another system of equations and we have to graph. So you can see the first one, they gave it to you in slope intercept. That's no problem. One fourth x plus seven. But this red one, we need to change either to slope intercept or x, y intercepts. If it's in standard form like this, I usually just go to x and y intercepts. So I go 3x uh, is equal to 12, 4y is equal to 12. When I divide by 3, x is equal to 4, so 4 comma 0. If I divide by 4, y is equal to 3, so 0 comma 3. Now I can graph those two equations. The first one is the green one, so I start at 7. So I'm going to start at 7 over here. And I go up 1 and over 4. And I go down 1 and over 4. And then draw my line as straight as I can. You're going to want to make sure you draw some straight lines so you go exactly through the point. Okay? Uh, for the red equation, I can go 4, 0 and 0, 3. And if you notice, I can go up. I went down 3 and over 4, so I can go up 3 and over 4. And it does intersect right at this point. Okay? So again, circle your answer. Write the coordinates, negative 4, comma 6, and that is your answer. Okay, You can do a visual check 
to see does this work. So on the green one, if I put a negative 4 in here, that's a negative 1, because 1 4 times negative 4 is negative 1, plus 7 is negative 6, I'm sorry, is equal to positive 6, and that is true. So that one works. For this red equation, if I put a negative 4 in for x and a 6 in for y, I get negative 12 plus 24 is equal to 12. That works. Okay, so that's how you solve by graphing. Okay, the other way, I'm um, sorry, another style of question they might ask is, you need to write your own system of equations, and then you are gonna have, might have to graph it and then interpret the data. Okay, so in this example, a koa tree is 10 meters tall, and it grows 2 meters per day. And a coconut tree is 6 meters tall and grows 4 meters per day. The equation for the core tree, if x is equal to the number of days, when you have per day, that's going to be your slope. So when you write your equation, y is equal to, there's your slope because it's 2 times the number of days, and this 10 meters is your y-intercept. Okay, for coconut, y is equal to, there's your slope again, that's your m, so 4x, and then here is your b plus 6. That's how you write a system of equations. Now when we graph it, they're in slope intercept. So I'm going to move this back here so you can see. Um, if you notice, I only have the first quadrant set up. So you can see it's number of days. Oh, sorry. It's number of days on the bottom. And I went by ones. Okay. And over here at height, I went by two days, so it would fit on the graph. So when I graph this first green equation, the COA, I start at 10, so my y intercept is 10, and I go 2 meters. Okay, this is where it's tricky. Each vertical line on the y-axis here is worth 2. So if I actually go up one line, that's 2, and then I go over one day. So I'm going up 2 meters over one day. Up 2 meters over one day. And that's how the core is going to look. Okay. For the red on the coconut, I start at 6. And I go up 4 and over 1. But again, this is 2 days, 4 days. I mean, sorry, 2 meters, 4 meters over 1 day. 2 meters, 4 meters over 1 day. And you can see that it will intersect right there. And that's my coconut. Okay, um, then if you interpret the data, you can say right now the core is taller. After one day, the core is still taller. After two days, they are even height. They're going to be 14 meters. They're both tied. And then three days and beyond, the coconut tree will be taller than the core tree. But that's how you interpret it. After two days, they will be the same height, 14 meters. Okay, so that's how you graph. I'm sorry, you write your system. You graph it and you interpret it. There are a couple special cases when you're solving systems of linear equations. Okay, so I want to show you a couple from the book. This is going to be a little easier. If they give you these two equations, y is equal to negative 2x plus 1, y is equal to negative 2x minus 1. If you notice, the slopes are the same, but the y-intercepts are different. So when you graph it, Here's the top one the, with the positive 1 intercept and negative 2. Here's the bottom one. They are parallel. They will never intercept. And if you remember, when you solve by graphing, the solution is where they intersect. So if they never intersect, they're going to have no solution. Okay, so parallel lines have no solutions. Here's another interesting one. 2x plus 4y is equal to 8. y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 2. Okay. I'm going to have to block this a little to try and do it. When I come here and I rewrite this, 2x plus 4y is equal to 8. When I minus 2x from both sides, I get 4y is equal to negative 2x plus 8. I divide by 4, and I get y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 2. If you notice, that is the same equation. Okay. So if I graph it, it's just going to be right on top of each other. Okay. In that case, 
It's infinite many solutions, okay? So they'll ask you, how many solutions does this system have? If they're parallel, it would be no solve. If it's the same equation, there would be infinite number of solutions because any point on this line is a solution. Okay, so 2, 1 is a solution. 0, 2 is a solution for both equations. But if you notice, the line goes on forever because there's arrows. Okay, and that's why there's an infinite number because any point on the line is a solution for both equations since they're the same equation. Okay, so here's a quick... Um, table in the book for you to see the number of solutions. Okay, the first one. If you have different slopes, and I'll make this back so you can see the whole thing, sorry. If you have different slopes, like this, you will only have one solution because they got to intersect somewhere. Okay, the next one, if they have same slope, but different y-intercepts. Same slope, but different y-intercepts. They're going to be parallel. You have no solution. And the third one is if they have the same slope and the same y-intercept, they're going to have an infinite number of solutions because it's the same line. Okay. If they ask you how much, and you don't have to write infinite, you can, you can write infinite solutions like this. A side or eight is the symbol for infinite. Okay, so that's how you do it. Again, I'm going to make it wide out so you can kind of see. If they have, if they have different slopes, they are going to intersect and they're going to have one solution. If they have same slopes, different y-intercepts to parallel and also same slope, same intercept, same line, infinite. Okay, that's how you do section 7.1. Again, 7.2 is going to be solving by Substitution, solving systems of equations, and 7.3 will be solving by linear combo or elimination.